am joined by Mohammed Alamouche. Mohammed is an aeronautical engineer, and Mohammed's going to be talking about his career and answering your questions live here on YouTube. Mohammed, welcome. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing good. Hi, Dion. Good afternoon, everyone. Mohammed, let's start off with what inspired you to become an engineer first off? What was the did you was there one big trigger or some key moments or key people in your life? <laughs> Yeah, well, basically, it's a, a combination of two things, right? So um, starting with, um, uh, yeah, uh, growing up in a family that aviation is in the, in the, in, in the blood, in the business, so aviation business in the blood. So my father um, uh, is a retired uh, um, pilot. Uh, he worked for the Air Force in Jordan and then uh, worked as a, a civilian uh, pilot. Uh, as well, and uh, he has a massive uh, of experience um, in the operation uh, um, uh, as a fleet captain. So basically, I grew in this um, atmosphere. I was always interested to know more about aviation. I uh, joined uh, multiple times uh, my father on duty, on on on, on flights, on trips. Uh, it was um, very inspiring when I, yeah when you go into the cockpit. Uh, especially in, in, in the takeoff and landing. And you see all these uh, uh, buttons and um, uh, yeah, technology around. It's, uh, yeah, it was always uh, something I wanted to know more about and how this uh, <laughs> machine uh, uh, work, right? The aircraft. So this is um, one part of it. And the other part, yeah, um, uh, I was... Yeah, between, yeah, I would like to be like my father, a pilot, or, but I, I actually found uh, I was more interested in, in the technical stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, on the, on the engineering part of it, uh, to understand how things work and why and the physics. So this combination basically between, yeah, what um, uh, a, a key person in my life, like my father uh, was doing and my uh, uh, interest uh, into engineering and uh, mechanics uh, and physics was, uh, yeah, both of them uh, actually led to, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, choice. So, Mohammed, you decided, okay, you much rather focus on the actual engineering side of uh, aer the aeronautical industry rather than going into being a pilot yourself. You then, you studied at Jordan University of Science, I believe, um, as a Bachelor of Aeronautical Engineering, and then you went into doing yep. an internship. Now that's going to be, for many students, I mean, maybe some of the students watching here today, um, or maybe watching back on demand, they may be, or an aeronautical engineering students, they're going to want to know, how do you get into that? What are those next steps? And what are you going to experience? So how did you get into your internship? Was that already set up for you? Or did you have to go out and hunt for it? No, well, this is a very good question. Uh, and, and yeah, basically, you know, uh, for especially for bachelor students uh, in, in, in the last stages, of, of their uh, studies, they, they start to uh, maybe uh, evaluating options, whether I can, whether sh I shall, uh, let's say, uh, uh, pursue my like uh, studies, uh, go further into the academics, uh, go for a more sub uh, program. So I'm uh, more specialized into it uh, on, uh, let's say, on the academia side, or uh, maybe yeah, I need this, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, taste and and uh, understand really um, how it how it works in, in the field, right? Um, uh, so basically, I was in my uh, fourth year was going, yeah, considering both options. Uh, so I thought, yeah, maybe to in order to um, make uh, such a decision, I need maybe to go for an internship, and uh, where I started to look. In, in Jordan for um, uh, companies that uh, work in this uh, in, in the industry. Uh, and it was not easy actually exercise. At the end of the day, um, the aviation industry, the, uh, it's a bit maybe also uh, small somehow comparing to uh, other industries. Um, so basically some, in, 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 uh, it depends on where you live. 
uh, options uh, are limited, right? So, it, no, it was not easy. I applied uh, uh, within uh, um, a big group uh, to to the available slots for this internship. This company, for example, uh, every year have a limit uh, amount of uh, slots for internships. Uh, also, the other options was uh, Royal Jordanian Airlines in Jordan and another company. So uh, I was trying to get into this, uh, the internship so uh, I can have this feeling and understand uh, uh, yeah, what, what it means uh, working in, in, in the maintenance side or the operation side so I can then make, make up my uh, mind uh, for which option uh, to go for. What would you? What were you doing as an intern? You were uh, were you a maintenance? You were uh, a liaison engineer. So what really does that mean? Well, uh, basically, um, it's it, the idea was to to learn as much uh, from different uh, let's say areas within the uh, within the company I worked for. So basically, basically, it was on job training. Uh, uh, more or less, and we had a program where we spend uh, uh, some time, uh, for example, in the um, in the hangar. Uh, then we move to the shops, uh, then the, the production, then the planning, then the engineering. Uh, so basically, we went over all the the whole place. Uh, we it, my internship was a long one. I spent about a year, uh, and I uh, spent let's say enough time in every uh, department. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we were, let's say, working uh, um, with, um, uh, let's, for example, in, in, the, in the hangar with the um, uh, mechanics, with the technicians. Uh, so uh, hands on. Uh, yeah, of course, we were not allowed to uh, do, uh, let's say, um, uh, work by ourselves, but we were helping. We, we had the job cards. So we were reading the instructions, next, uh, standing next to the uh, inspector during, for example, an, an, um, an, an inspection or a check or um, go around, for example. So yeah, it, uh, we were basically um, witnessing uh, the work uh, when, when it came to more uh, hands-on, like the hangar or the shops. If we talk about the shops, you know, the component shops for the aircraft where the basic uh, uh, components are being uh, serviced or maintained, like the uh, for example, APU, the landing gear, the um, uh, structure, the sheet metal, uh, uh, the avionics. Uh, yeah, and basically similar, you, you just also witness uh, um, uh, the maintenance and the servicing according to the uh, uh, maintenance manuals. So this, this kind of gives you an, an understanding what really uh, um, happens in the field and, and how um, uh, uh, so it, it gives you this this favor, and then when it comes to the uh, um, uh, more engineering uh, related, like the uh, production planning, where the uh, basically the team there is planning, they receive uh, they receive a package of of um, uh, uh, specific maintenance that need to be carried out on the aircraft, and uh, just basically the. Uh, there are different types of maintenance, uh, and, or they call it a uh, letter check, like A check, B check. So every interval, like you have it in, in your car, for example, every uh, um, uh, an interval, you have um, a certain amount of tasks that you need, you need to do, whether modification or uh, an inspection, some routine uh, tasks. Uh, so basically, the production and planning team, they receive this uh, package they uh, then assign it to the um, uh, uh, right teams th that uh, are working on the aircraft. So if this task is related to zone A on the aircraft, if we talk about the structure, they send it to the right team. If it's uh, for, uh, for the cabin or the uh, avionics bay or the engines, et cetera. So they distribute the work, they assign it, they put the time frame, um, and also they make the material required available on time. So it's more, um, uh, uh, to manage the, the uh, uh, work on the aircraft. And then you go to the uh, engineering uh, uh, section where basically the, their uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, part is uh, to evaluate the maintenance manuals, uh, 
to um, uh, uh, let's say evaluate the modifications that the uh, manufacturers or the OEM releases uh, from time to time uh, and uh, decide whether um, uh, they need to do uh, um, this modification or not uh, on, on this component, on that aircraft and so on. So it's also interesting, a lot of uh, um, knowledge is required and uh, but also in the aviation industry in general it's it's uh, you know it's a heavily regulated uh, for everything there is a dedicated uh, uh, a checklist procedure quality system uh, so it's straightforward uh, it's not easy you need to do a lot of reading uh, but at least you have a guidelines checklist and um, yeah, a lot of uh, also people with knowledge uh, that you can learn from. Uh, the other question is, what is better? Is it an apprenticeship or an internship? All, all, this also depends on the, uh, uh, on the program uh, uh, itself, how the program uh, you study is structured. For example, uh, uh, there are some uh, bachelor programs, they, they, they don't have this, um, uh, let's say, uh, concept like uh, the uh, only they, you can go for an internship, but there are more like uh, applied schools that uh, where you can have kind of more combination between really like uh, on field learning. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, I think they call it sandwich uh, course. So it depends which which uh, program uh, you want to go for. And, and just to highlight this, if if, if you know definitely that you want to work in the airlines or maintenance or in general in the in the industry uh, but more maintenance or operations side i think i think those applied uh, uh, programs would be more uh, relevant but uh, if you're not sure you might uh, you, you you might consider as well going for the uh, research and the academia and the design uh, design aspect I would recommend to go for a bachelor and then, um, uh, yeah, maybe an internship. Your, your next role now at MTU, can you tell us more about why you then moved from Air Data to MTU and what that new role involved? Yeah, yeah. so basically, um, like I mentioned, I moved from industry to IT and then I was like, yeah, this combination is, is perfect in order to uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, provide a good service for the operators uh, from uh, coming from the maintenance side and from the leasing side. Uh, uh, and, and basically, you know, now we are, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, um, dis discussion in the industry about digitalization and digital transformation. And one of the important topics that are coming up, uh, which is basically predictive maintenance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how we can utilize uh, some solutions that are already available in the market for some time uh, off the shelf um, uh, to tailor it and make it uh, applicable to use case in the industry. Uh, for example, now um, uh, IoT tools to collect uh, um, uh, the data during, yeah, in the field from the aircraft uh, also, uh, you, utilizing AI in, in, uh, um, uh, in predictive maintenance. So there are a lot of uh, 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 yeah initiatives, let's say, and projects that are going on in, in, in the industry. A lot of companies are investing uh, um, um, big time uh, to really uh, transform and make uh, utilize uh, these solutions and make them uh, available to, to better support, um, uh, let's say, their customers, right? Uh, so from my, for, for me, um, when I, at the, at the point when I, uh, before I, I, I joined MTU, uh, uh, basically th this topic, which is like two years ago, three years ago, the topic was trending. And uh, I, I found that MTU was uh, hiring uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, a, a position in digital transformation, right? And they wanted someone that has, um, that, that, like the set of skill, uh, skills that they were looking at. Uh, and this is something already like a trending in the market. And this is a message maybe to send to the students, what uh, um, skill set now uh, companies uh, in the industry uh, are, are looking at. So beside the business knowledge, 
uh, now you see uh, many companies adding the, the IT uh, uh, set of skills. Right, like um, if you're good with pro programming, if you know a programming language, basically uh, the the set of skill, uh, the set of skills, sorry, uh, they, they were looking at is was combination between my uh, previous uh, experience and my uh, um, uh, my current experience at that time with Air Data, which is more IT. So it was actually a perfect uh, fit, and I want yeah, and and uh, I, I wanted to actually to step in uh, into the digital transformation because it's it's a topic or area because it's uh, yeah it's uh, it's a hot topic it's trending and this is where the future uh, where we are going let's say in the future so i th i thought yeah, i think it's it's right time now to uh, step into it and uh, this is how i joined uh, into you our engines yeah Mohammed, what would be your key messages to the students out there? I know we've got quite a few watching right now in terms of um, how they approach their career, of the specific things that you should think they should keep in mind. Have you got any thoughts on that? I would like recommend for, for, for the students who are considering uh, um, or at state or at this stage where, where they want to decide uh, what they want to choose or what they want to go for. Uh, many conferences now uh, are available to, to anyone. Uh, so you can listen, understand where this industry is going, what are the problems, what are the technologies, what are the trends. And basically you can just uh, attend those uh, events uh, and just uh, keep, keep an eye and, and, and attend. Brilliant, well, thank, thank you so much. We are done for today. Mohammed, thank you very Perfect. much for being a wonderful guest. It's been a great pleasure and I hope you have enjoyed it Same. as well. Thanks, uh, Dion, and appreciate uh, having me on this uh, show. And uh, also thanks uh, for all the audience uh, for their uh, time today.